Hello again, Bugatti fans. So we got uh, another resin model. This time it's uh, the questionable paint job this thing has. The Veyron Lor Blanc. I'm not pronouncing that correct. This is by a brand called LJM. I reviewed one other by this brand, the Daniel Arsham Porsche, which actually turned out to be a pretty nice model. So hopefully this will be just as nice, if not better, because this one has a little trick up its sleeve, which you'll see at the end, or in the title. Uh, okay, so AliExpress, I bought this one there. I actually pre-ordered it from my local shop, but it never came in. So maybe it's just on delay, or maybe it just got lost and someone else bought it. Uh, okay, so this is blue, and there's the hint of a, the trick up its sleeve. Alright, so it's not licensed. If you want licensed products, uh, you're going to have to buy a Hot Wheels. Okay, so you have an acrylic base as the glue holding it together. This is a new model, I think, pretty much, yeah. The reason why I say that is that I've had two models now with scratched bases, meaning they were displayed or used. And uh, frankly, I think that's lying, right? You can't sell a used model and say it's new. You wouldn't buy a new car with a bunch of scratches on it, right? Like a real car. So I would call that used. Anyways, here's the official Bugatti website. Let me just get this open first, though. Uh, careful not to break those mirrors off. And let me focus on this blurb here. So this thing is literally made with some porcelain stuff. So they teamed up with uh, Royal Porcelain Factory in Berlin. And uh, what they did is they looked at the natural reflections of the body and they had porcelain painters paint those reflections this blue color. So, and then there actually are porcelain parts like an elephant, I guess, and the hubcap centers, I believe, are made of porcelain, as in the ceramics. Uh, I'll have to zoom in on this one because it's worth looking at. Hold on. Plus, plus, plus. This image here. So you can see them casting, uh, where'd my cursor go? I don't know where my mouse cursor went, but they're casting the EB logo here, which apparently ends up on probably the trunk. Uh, their wheel centers. And then here you got, have a porcelain painter painting the stripes, very much like an automotive pinstriper. That's where they found the similarity. So I read this on a Supercar Blondie uh, uh, transcript. She was the third person to drive this car, I guess, so. There's a porcelain elephant. And uh, this thing costs around $2.5 million, somewhere in that ballpark. I was, have to assume you already probably own a few Bugattis if you're buying this particular car. I don't know how many were made. Maybe this is a one-off, I'm not sure. No, it can't be a one-off because I see like blue ones and black ones. Or maybe it's the lighting, I'm not sure. Maybe they have different colors, I can't say for sure. This one looks like it's black. It's probably supposed to be. Maybe if there is one, it would probably be this dark blue, but I must have missed out on that, or maybe that's the one I pre-ordered and never got. So there's some porcelain, and uh, there's that view. So the wheels generally match in their shape. Not 100% though. Let's get to this side view here. Sorry for the camera shaking. It's not really a true side view, but uh, looks, looks similar, the body lines and all that, even at that angle. And the wheels again look similar. I do have a top view though, and we can see, granted this model has the roof on it. Yeah, you'll have to decide if that paint job looks similar enough or not. <clears throat> okay, going to the rear view. This one actually has to wing up just as well. The real car has much more white. It's like the taillights are white, unless they're illuminated. Perhaps this model has illuminated, you know, brake lights on instead of the whites. And then we have this top three quarter view with the roof on. And that's actually probably the best comparison yet. But, you know, that's a blue photo. <clears throat> Well, while we're, while we're at it, we have the metal nameplate here. Boy, it's so shiny. Can't focus. Come on. So there's no mention of LJM, but we do have a, a 135 of 299. There could be a number zero, though. I've had that happen before. 
<clears throat> so you don't know who made it in the future. So the base, as you can see, is polished and is crystal clear. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty sure you can actually see my fingerprints. Yeah, you can actually see my fingerprint through the entire width of that plastic. So that's very impressive. Very well done. All right, let's start with this front wheel here on this side. <clears throat> There's something about uh, the wheels where like, you're not seeing the black depth of the spokes. Maybe it's because the whole wheel is painted silver. And those inner surfaces, they're not black. So that's what's throwing me off. It might dimensionally be quite accurate to the real photos. It's just that they didn't paint those inner inner edges black. So it looks a little bit different. <clears throat> okay, but the center cap is nice. You can see the EB logo there. And it's a different color as if it was porcelain. So that's very impressive. The uh, brake system back there, the rotor itself has cross drilling. And that looks all right. Um... And then I guess there's a brake, brake, black brake caliper towards the door. You know, I, I don't know if it's three dimensional though. Ah, oh boy, I can't focus. And hold on, let me get a hand free. You'll have to see. I'm looking for a phone screen. I can't tell if that's really three dimensional. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Oh, but look, it says I think Bugatti on the caliper, or some sort of text is there. So that's nice. But yeah, I think it's very flat. I think that's a photo etched piece of metal with the text etched into it. So unfortunately, that's really not good enough these days. Uh, a lot of resin models have three-dimensional calipers. I mean, even, even die-cast premiums have three-dimensional calipers. So I'd rather have a three-dimensional caliper than a flat caliper that has Bugatti written on it. <laughs> All right, well, that's just me. What do you guys prefer? Look at the center cap again. It's got these, like, a star pattern molded in around it. Very neat. Okay. Going down the side here. Uh, sadly, there's no black paint in that vent. And sadly, the paint isn't getting in there. You can see the raw resin, which is like a tan or yellow color. It wouldn't be so bad if you couldn't see it from the side, but you can, right? If you're getting, that's kind of... That's weird. Yeah, that's really actually not good at all for a resin model you know if this is a ten dollar die cast i could understand no paint getting in there but this is a, an expensive resin so i think the whole thing should be white even if they have to go in there with a paintbrush before they airbrush it you know they should have that paint in there and then realistically there should be black paint in that vent or really just a hole so you can see the tire so that's pretty weak ljm not good <sighs> Another thing, LGM. This door handle looks like raw plastic. It clearly doesn't look like the same color as what's on the body. Um, so you know they painted the body and then they glued on the door handle, but they were they weren't they, they seemed like a, were too lazy to paint the door handle the same color, or maybe the door handle isn't clear coated. But to me, it just looks like a slightly different shade of white, or like this light getting through it, like it's translucent. The mirror doesn't seem to have that problem, you know, the mirror is clear coated just like the body and it even has that crazy pinstriping on it as well. But the door handle, yeah, it just seems off and frankly if I look at the side photos, the door handle has some of that striping on it. And so maybe it would have been better if they glued the door handles on first before they painted. But maybe that, maybe the stripes are a decal, which does lead to the question, are they a decal? I feel like they're under the clear coat, so, or is this tampo print? I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's printed on top or below the clear coat. Right now, I think it, well, I'm not going to say. I don't know. I'll have to look at it some more. So at least this vent isn't just raw resin, right? This has a photo etched piece of metal in it, and it's painted black, so that's good color separation. The fuel filler is a photo etched piece and it has that elephant in it. So that looks nice. I wonder if that's supposed to be porcelain. It might be on the real car, but it's good enough for this model. Um, this wheel, now I'm looking at the angle of it. It's got this roughness. Oh, wow, the paint just chipped off. So don't touch the wheels. 
That, that's not good. So I guess you just probably shouldn't open these boxes if you don't want to uh, have defects because that's what's going to happen if you touch something. So I got to make sure to not touch anything any, again. Uh, this is clearly not going to roll. You can clearly see that tire is jammed up in there. So I feel like it's actually too compressed. There is an air gap in those photos between the tire and the body. So I might have to reduce some tension. In fact, let me come back. Uh, reducing the tension made no difference. It's still jammed up in there. You see the brake rotor is really far inset. In fact, it's too far inset. It's way back there, as if almost at the edge of the tire. So that's not realistic either. LJM, you're letting me down all of a sudden. Not good. Alright, uh, I guess we might as well go around to the back. We got this reflector. That's really nice. It's very thin and it's very shiny. I think it's perhaps metal, photoish metal with those dots, but then they painted like a red translucent over it. Okay, the rear vents are definitely stainless steel, photo etched. You can see the light getting back in there, but I don't think there's anything actually back behind those grills. Let me reduce this to one. Boom in. I mean, it's just air, I think. I don't see any exhaust pipes or anything like that, but still, it's nice that there's some air behind it. I think it's weak that there's no license plate. There could, should have been, you know, something there. Maybe written Bugatti or Lor Blanc or something. I mean, cheap models have license plates. What's nice though is the logo. It's a separate piece, as if it was porcelain. You know, I'm sure it's just metal painted white, but that's a really nice touch. And possibly it's clear coated as well, because it looks like it's actually doming over the letters. So that's actually really cool. And if that's what I need to take to get not have a license plate, maybe that's acceptable. Uh, I guess, is that the exhaust? I can't remember. But anyways, there's some depth to it. And there's a photo etch piece around it with a bunch of tiny dots. The rear taillights actually look very nice as well. You can see like a little fresneling. Or maybe those are dots etched into a piece of metal. And then red resin or red paint, clear paint over it. But there's some light bouncing around in those taillights. Not very deep. And frankly, this one is not so good. Uh, these all look round, except for this. It looks like there's not enough red there. So that's not great either. All right, third brake light. Yeah, it's a tiny strip. And I guess that looks okay. The rear wing there, you can kind of see how it's really thin down here and thicker up there, which I assume happens on the real car. Like. Oh, actually, that's very nice indeed. You, you know, hinge points and stuff. That actually looks really cool. And then it's nice that they got color under there. You have this wing here, all black. And then I think it's all going pretty far down into the body. Look at that. That's interesting. Yeah, whoa. That's, a, that's really interesting. That's a very deep. And I guess that must be the exhaust or some sort of heat shielding there down in that air, or that recess. But yeah, I guess you wouldn't see it through the vent. It's behind this white part of the body panel. Hmm. Okay, well that's actually a lot cooler than I thought it would be. I think it might be 3D printed. That could be a support structure right there from a resin 3D printing. But I might be mistaken. Alright, so that's an unexpected plus. And they have the funky pinstriping on it. And you'll notice it's not actually symmetric. You know, there's a peak here. This is different from that side. Um, and that is, I think, the way it is on the real car, so that's very good. Uh, let me just make sure the this side of the model isn't a total disaster. Yeah, the rear EB looks decent enough. Now this side looks like it's more white paint going in there. It's not all the way in there, but in general, maybe that looks... It's not as bad as the other side. Okay. And then, no, that still looks a little bit different from the rest of the body. That vent looks okay. That gas cap looks okay. And so the side windows, super thin packaging, and then a photo etch piece painted black over there to represent the raised molding. Uh, the front wheel, yeah, the logo's a little tilted, but whatever. Coming around to the front, we got the shiny stainless grills again. Uh, I assume there's nothing behind them. 
That one looks like it might have a dent in the middle. Yeah, I guess that's all right. The center grill again. That's the shiny stainless, but it seems to have the Bugatti on there. Let's get in. I'm zoomed four times already, so I guess I have to bring the model closer. It does kind of say Bugatti, so I guess that's all right. But wait a sec. I don't think the center one is passing air, or is it? I'm going to have to get the flashlight again. I can't tell if it's passing air or if there's black printed on that piece of metal. <clears throat> I'm kind of afraid to touch things now because the paint chipped off before. But I'm crazy and I don't learn from my mistakes, so I'm insane. Nope, that is a, that is a grill. I can feel those openings, so that's, that's good. And the surround is painted silver. The headlight covers look pretty nice, you know, a little fresnelling. That's actually on the outside surface, these ridges. And then the light buckets are pretty far behind that, and you can see like kind of a light bulb there. Maybe that's a projector indication. I'm not sure if there should be color in there for like an amber turn signal, but oh well. Maybe there isn't. Maybe it's a white bulb with a yellow LED. The wiper blades are photo etched. You can see a little bit of an air gap between the arms. And then the actual blade is bent perpendicular to the windscreen, so that's pretty accurate. And they're both well laid up. Uh, let's go to the rear engine. So it's exposed as you can see, and you have some photo etch pieces over the cam covers, like black grating. And you can actually see 16.4 on the right side, that's the leaderage. Uh, that might be a word, I doubt it. And then EB on the left side. The Toa Bugatti, uh, I'm mispronouncing that as well. Okay, so I think that's a pretty nice engine. And then uh, you can see there's a rear window there, and that's that same packaging, uh, thin plastic, so you can look right through it nice and easy. And then you can now see a rear view mirror hanging down there. Okay. These vents, do they have anything? Yep, the top vents here have that same stainless grill. So, very nice. And I guess now we can get into the interior. I'm gonna put the car down. <clears throat> good so a nice tan interior um, you can see in the center console probably a white decal with some sort of details knobs and stuff like that hmm it's a tough call you know a lot of other brands would actually have molded knobs and then just paint them with like a dot of silver or something but these guys just have a flat dash with the decal but maybe the maybe the real car has a relative a bunch of flush buttons, so that might be accurate still. That shifter uh, or whatever transmission actuator is sticking up like kind of like a shark fin. So I don't think it's you know I don't think it's like a stick shift. It's just some sort of knob to engage the electronic transmission. I would have to assume this has an electronic transmission. Okay. Uh, some sort of recess maybe for a phone and then uh, as you can see the top window it's like cloudy they they have like a gray clear coat on the back side maybe the real car is a, like an electronic glass roof or something or maybe it's just tinted but obviously you really can't see much through it so you got to look through the dash or the side windows so here on the seat side we have the red uh, seatbelt buckle there and then some uh, ribbing in the seats, a cross hatch pattern in the seat cushion. Uh, all right, we have the EB logo on the steering wheel, looking good. Mm, I have to get the flashlight, hold on. I'm trying to not lose focus, hit focus again. Flashlight, let's go to 15 lumens. Oh, is there anything in the gauges? I don't think there is. That's a big oversight for a resin model. Yeah, call me crazy, but I, I don't think there's any sort of decal with instrument dial, or maybe right there. You know what? I'm wrong, as always. I think there's a black decal. The thing is, it's inside a really deep recessed hole. Uh, from, can you see it through the back window? 
There's too much reflection of the body. Unless I can wash it out, maybe? Let me, let me try from this side. Hit focus on that steering wheel. Yeah, so yeah, I think there is a black dial. It's just so far back in there. The best way to look at it is through the rear window. Okay. Um, just while I'm at it, I'm just looking for like uh, pedals, gas pedal, brake pedal kind of thing. They might be there, it's just that maybe the, the windows are so shallow that you can't possibly see them unless you're 164 size of a real human being. So, I don't know, there, probably, there could be, there might not be, but if you can't see them anyways, I figure it might be better to just skip it, put the money somewhere else into the model. Let's look at that door panel. So that's cool. The door panel has this crazy pinstriping as well. And you can see like the door pull recess, a little bit of an armrest there. So that looks nice. Uh, the rear view mirror. It actually looks it looks like it might be molded, like there's a recess. The seats have little slots for a seat belt to come through. I don't know if the real car does it or not. But yeah, there's no actual seat belt, just the buckle. And that, you know, the middle of the seat is our circular recess, probably for the logo, but, you know, there's no EB decal. Okay, well... I mean, it's an okay interior. It's not the greatest I've seen, but it's not bad. Let's start the comparison with some die casts. Here we have the old auto art of the, uh, the Veyron. And for the longest time, this was the best Veyron you can get. This is die cast metal. And this also has some photo etch gas caps. It's still pretty darn good, I think, for a die cast. It has a foily, shiny sticker. Yeah, and you can see the stance is actually better on this. It's more realistic. So, and this yellow in there. So maybe I, this should have been yellow on that one. But I don't know for sure. Okay, now we have two of a lesser brand. Uh, a long time ago, there's something called Granian Partners, and this is part of their hypercar collection. So here we have the standard Veyron die cast as well but I think these things are probably like six dollars when they're new so you can't expect the world I added my own license plate and the engine cover comes off same with on this one but really are you ever going to display with the engine cover off so I'm not going to bother uh, this one I swapped the wheels though just some aftermarket you know alloys and this is the 16.4 Super Sport okay so I guess not bad for the original price. Not too, too bad for even today's diecast. <clears throat> so it's got those spin in here. Try a low angle. Focus. Alright, so I'm going to get these out. And pull up my two other Bugatti uh, resins. Ah, sadly, this one by uh, Cart, or I think it was a C-A-R-T, great paint job. You know, this translucent, like, squid luminescent kind of thing going on. Look at the rainbow on that paint. <laughs> but the problem is, uh, this lens cover is falling off because I made that. It was missing that. That's just like packaging plastic. And then this brake caliper is facing the wrong de direction. Not the caliper, the brake rotor. So... You, you can't fix that. They just put the wrong rotor on. So that's too bad. But it is a great paint job, that's for sure. That's the Chiron. I could get Skyview or something. This is this Cento Dieci, and this is by U2. And, uh, yeah, the resin. I think I like the Chiron the most as far as the styling goes. You know what, so I'm gonna turn the lights off for a moment. I'm gonna also put on some some sunglasses because I'm gonna cast a UV light because I think this might actually show up.
well, see, com compared to the silver, I think it shows up a little bit more, but not a great deal. You know what? I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to turn the room light off. All right, I also turned the monitor off, even though it's a black screen and it emits light. Uh, so, actually, I'm, I'm, I don't know, the this squid-looking one, I guess it does show up more, but I'm not sure if it's because it's white versus silver, or if it actually is the pearlescent clear coat on that one. Anywho, I'm going to remove these. And the reason why I'm using this UV light is to charge up the uh, glow-in-the-dark paint on this thing. I'm not sure if the real car glows. Uh, please leave a comment. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it does. I mean, it was a two and a half million dollar car. Uh, I'm sure Bugatti can afford glow-in-the-dark paint. Although I'm not sure the longevity of glow-in-the-dark paint, if it cracks or something like that. All right, so in a moment, mm. Mm, that's not the best glowing job, is it? I'm gonna come back with some stronger flashlights. So now I have three flashlights all banged together. And if this doesn't charge up this paint, this would probably be the worst glow in the dark paint that this brand used. I mean, it's kind of nice that they even did it because most models don't glow in the dark. You will find other ones though. I think there's like a Lamborghini you can buy with a glow in the dark paint job. There might be two or three others that, I'm a, that are out there that actually do have glow paint jobs. All right, so hopefully, Hopefully after one more rotation, that should be enough to charge the uh, paint. Alright, I'm going to remove the lights here. Yay! And it's dying very quickly. Wow, so that really is probably the cheapest glow paint you can buy. Uh, really good glow-in-the-dark things. They'll last up to 12 hours, or even 24. Um, although, hold on, you know what? It might just be the distance, because to my naked eye, you can I can clearly tell that this thing is glowing. I think it's just maybe the fact that this is, is a Galaxy A7 phone. They're not really designed to review models, never mind glow-in-the-dark models. So I take that back. I mean, it is still glowing. It's just that I don't think you're going to see it on the... You can see only a tiny bit on the, the screen. All right, well, you're going to have to buy one, I guess, to uh, really know for sure. All right, let's get that main light on because I'm going to break something. All right, I don't know what I'm seeing. So, uh, was there anything majorly wrong with this? Uh, overall, the decal and logo placements were pretty good. Uh, I guess it's my fault for touching it and chipping that paint off. That's not really the fault of the model. I don't think it's ever really meant to be opened or taken apart. Uh, reducing the tension on the bottom screws made no difference, so you don't even don't even bother with that. I think the interior is done well enough. Um, hmm. So all in all, pretty good. I guess maybe it's missing a license plate. You know, cheaper models will do it, but is it 100% necessary? Maybe not. So all in all, I guess I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, oh, the flat brake calipers. That's a nitpick, but, uh, you know, a lot of cheaper models and a lot of other resin brands will also have three-dimensional brake calipers. So if you're going for detail, that's not really realistic, right, having a flat brake caliper. Well, I guess that'll do. Uh, and I guess we'll see you in the next resin review. Take care.